That's too loose. Shouldn't be able to do that. What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I wanna diagnose a problem that I was having with my T5 transmission that I pulled out of my 66 Mustang. This past summer, I was having a problem where I noticed that there was uh, a noise coming from the transmission, more like a, a, like a chatter. And the best way to describe it is when you're, when you're off the throttle and you're coasting, I can't hear this sound. And when you're on throttle, like you're accelerating, like you're trying to get up to speed, uh, I, don't, I can't hear the sound, but that doesn't mean it's not there because I, I hear my exhaust, my exhaust is pretty loud. So there may be a problem there, but I can't hear it. But when I notice it is when I'm driving yeah, like the like partial throttle, like enough to maintain my speed. You know, if I'm just driving on a flat road, just holding a speed, constant speed, you know, 30 miles an hour or whatever. And I get this, again, it's more like a chatter. And if you, as you feather the throttle, you can get that sound to, you know, if I left off the throttle, it goes away. And if I start to apply the throttle, it comes back. And uh, again, when I'm on the throttle, like I'm accelerating, I, I can't hear it. So, and I did notice that it's the worst in third gear, but that may be because of the transmission speed relative to the speed that I'm going. Maybe it's the loudest there. I, I can hear it in first and second, and I think I can hear it in fourth. But what's weird is I don't think I can hear it in fifth gear. Now that may have something to do with it because you know, on this T5 transmission, the fifth gear is actually outside of the main housing. It's on the back end of the intermediate shaft and on the back end of the, of the input shaft. And that may be something, that may be nothing, I don't know. But I do know that I, I want to fix that. And while I have the transmission out of the car, because I'm doing that motor work, let's see if I can go ahead and take it apart <clears throat> and see if I can find the problem. This is not really going to be a, a how-to video. Um, I don't know if this is a common problem for people. Um, so a lot of my videos, I show you how to do everything. I am not a T5 expert. Uh, there are plenty of videos out there that'll, that'll show you how to disassemble. I don't know, Paul Cangelosi is probably the, the guru uh, when it comes to these transmissions. He made a book, I bought that book that he made on these transmissions. There's lots of videos of him doing it. He's got his own channel, his own shop. He's the guy to go to. <clears throat> if you wanna know how to disassemble this and service it, whether it's new gears, new synchros, new seals, whatever you're doing, my, my video's not gonna be that, but I, I do wanna dig it apart and see what we can find. Before I dig into the transmission, I did wanna point out real quick that if you take the input shaft I don't know if you can hear that, but I don't think I shimmed this well enough. You know, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but there is some play in this input shaft, and that may be part of the problem that I'm having. I also, I, so I suspect it's either the shimming of the input shaft here, or it's down here in the shimming of the intermediate shaft, which we'll have to take the tail shaft off to show you what I'm talking about. So getting inside here is going to be pretty easy. We're going to take off the shift in mechanism, drop a pin that's inside there. Then we could take these 15 millimeter bolts off the tail housing, pull that off. And the 10 millimeter bolts that take the top of this off and pull this off out of the way. And then the 13 millimeter bolts that hold on the input shaft housing here. Take all that off and that'll get to the meat of where we need to, see, where we need to be.
right, guys, this is the part that I wanted to get to, to see the intermediate shaft. And see, if you take a look at this, that shouldn't do that. I'm able to move the shaft this way. So I either didn't shim it well enough or it has worn in. Now this is a brand new intermediate shaft because I had to replace the one that came with the transmission. Uh, we're not supposed to be missing teeth. There's five teeth missing on fourth gear here. So I had to replace this when I got this transmission. And so, you know, it could be just because things are starting to seat and get worn in well. Uh, it was maybe possibly because I didn't shim it well enough. You know, when you're supposed to shim this, you're supposed to have two to four foot pounds of drag, or sorry, inch pounds, no, foot pound, I don't remember, two to four. And see how easy this is to spin? It should just almost immediately stop spinning as soon as I let go. And it's spinning really easily. And then I can move it in and out. So where do I go from here? Well, I definitely know that I need to take off this, this uh, intermediate shaft uh, retainer here and do some more shimming inside there because I not only do I need to get the slop out of that, I also need to make it so it doesn't just continue to free spin. And then also when I put back the input shaft uh, housing, I need to do a better job with shimming in that. that it's, it's not, you don't want it to be so tight where it doesn't move at all, but there was too much movement in there. So other than that, this thing looks pretty good. Yeah, the oil is pretty dark. I don't even have a thousand miles on this transmission. I suspect it's a combination of brand new gear, intermediate shaft, mating with the used gears on the, on, you know, the first through fourth here. And, but it also could be because of that, that, you know, as the, as with the helical gear, when they're driving each other, they actually want to push apart from each other, the way that the helical gears are cut. And so <clears throat> by having this shaft, it's allowed to move, it puts stress on all the gears and they're pushing away from each other and they're going to wear funny. And if I continue to drive this transmission without addressing it, I'm just going to ruin these gears. I don't want to buy another transmission, so I'm fortunate that I was taking stuff out of the car now. I can go in there and get this fixed and, and tighten this stuff up and get it to where it needs to be. So to fix this problem with the, the loose intermediate shaft, I need to re-shim that. Um, I've got some, some spare shims from the last time I did it, but really I, what I need to do is replace this end plate, block plate that I have on here. Uh, I referenced Paul Cangelosi before, you know, in his book, he talks about um, this piece that you can buy. And <laughs> I tried to buy that piece from him, but he didn't have any in stock. So unfortunately, Paul, if you see this, I had to get one from your, your competitor, you know, the, the eBay special. Uh, I don't know if that's part of the problem, but this time I was able to order one from your site. I got the part that you actually sell. And it's great about, about Paul's setup here is that he also includes the, the shims that you need. And they've got that peel in stick or peel in place or whatever that so you can peel off a couple thousandths of a time at a time for each layer to get to the right shim depth. And then of course he includes some fasteners and some Loctite to go with this setup. So I am gonna be upgrading to the correct plate, uh, get rid of this, this one that I have on here. Again, I don't know if that's part of the problem, but let's start eliminating stuff. And then I also, while I was at it, I ordered from Paul's site. He's got a uh, brand new, the, the shift fingers that go up in here in this, in this housing. They, uh, <clears throat> the ones from Tremec can stretch out, they can open up over time uh, if you're banging through the gears. And you know, these ones here, they don't look too bad, but is, you know, this is it's cheap insurance, right? So I, I don't wanna be stretching those things out and getting a scenario where, you know, potentially be able to be in two gears at once or something like that. I, I don't wanna do that. So I went ahead and ordered new shift fingers and then, um, or whatever this piece is called. And then also this, uh, this machine part that he also sells that, that the selector inside here, again, I, I'm spacing on the, on the name of these parts, but went ahead and ordered that from Pulse site. So now I've got some good parts to put inside here and get those things upgraded on the transmission. So guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I've got a little bit of work to do and I'm, I'm not going to bore you with me re shimming this thing, but I have to take it apart measure the, the, the shims I have, put some new ones in there and, and, and get to this part where it's, I mean, this again, this is just spins and spins and spins and it shouldn't move, move around like that. So I can fix that. I'll fix those pieces or replace those pieces there and, and put back together and I should be good to go. So guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out and we'll see you in the next one.
What are you guys still doing here? Oh, you want to know how this came out? How, how did the shimming come out? Um, well, the front shaft, uh, which is a lot better now, much stiffer, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, it still can move, which what you want, but I only had to shim it three thousandths, and this is a lot better, but that, that intermediate shaft, or counter gear sometimes it's called, uh, that retainer plate, I needed to add 33 thousandths to that. I don't know what I did wrong. I'm an idiot. I, <clears throat> I don't know why I thought that that was going to work uh, when I put that together. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know if something moved or what it was, but it's happy now. So we got to put that together and everything's all sealed up and uh, we're good. Uh, I did, <laughs> check this out. This is the, um, the retaining plate that I had on there and I was able to break that one free, but these other ones... Man, these these fasteners were they just they just spun out. They were horrible. I had to cut. I mean, look even this one here. It it busted as I was trying to put these hex marks in here so I can get a screwdriver and kind of tap it and twist them around and you know, there may be a better way to do it, but I'm glad that I had a new plate because getting this off was was a nightmare. Oh, and and then here's that uh that shift finger, see how it's kind of pressed in there? This is the factory one, the one that I got from Paul Cangelosi. It's a one-piece unit, a machined unit, and so it should be a lot stronger than this one that, uh, that came with the transmission. And then here's those, those uh, shifter lugs. Um, you know, you can't really tell. Uh, they, they look pretty square. I didn't measure them, but as cheap as these things are, I went ahead and just grabbed, like I said, grabbed that new set, threw them in there. So these are the old ones, so I don't need these anymore. But other than that, um, she's ready to go back in the car. I just need to get the, get the motor back in there. So, all right, guys. <laughs> I guess this is the end for real this time. <laughs>